It's very interesting question actually. Uh, if you look at this question from two angles, one is related to only genomics and another is related to conventional breeding. I always believe, not from the only private sector perspective, but also from the perspective of deliverables to the farming community, that genomics actually is leading now and it is going to be the support system to the conventional breeding. Without genomics, conventional breeding cannot succeed now. And that's very clear in the minds of private sector scientists, very specially because nowadays conventional breeding and the time required for the conventional breeding is more and with the tools and techniques in genomics and this particular support system, the deliverables are coming in two years or three years time with conventional bidding, same work is required to do in eight and ten years. We can't wait, number one. Number two, the trait has got its own limitation. The traits that we are specifically wanting in specific crops can be done very easily in genomics. So genomics is the perfect support system for conventional breeding and that is going to lead the breeding in future. It's actually a very confusing state at this particular thing on a question that if we relate this particular aspect only to the CG center and organizations like ICRISAT, should we do the high-end research and not more on the applied side? I would say that any public domain institute and CG center should definitely focus at this juncture on high-end research. Private sector and other sectors related to NGOs, many other ICAR, IAR centers like in India or state agriculture universities and many other places in Africa should focus on applied research and take the work that has been done in CG centers for application and giving it back as a deliverable to the farmer. For deliverables to the farmer and scaling up of the work that is being done at a high-end research is not the job of CG center. So I still believe that high-end research should be focus of CG center and application of that may be with some agreements, MOUs, all the things that can be charged on the organization should be done for an application side by state agriculture universities, private sector bodies, NGOs, farming communities and that's the job of this institutes and organization. CG centers should focus on high-end research. And I always believe to have controversy is not wrong. We agree to disagree and still work together is an essence of democracy. So people may disagree with me. That doesn't mean that we should fight. But with that disagreement, do we agree to work together? So I believe that for working together, high-end research Prioritizing the work of CG center has to be like that. Organization may not be only MNCs, SMEs and middle sector organization like Nirmal said should come to CG center. That's what we are doing for the last 25 years and take some part of that which is relevant for a smaller organization and deliverable to the farmer. ICRISAT cannot do what they had in their pocket for delivering to the farmer. But ICRISAT can join with 15 organizations after high-end research to deliver it to the farmer. So that's the job of communication and marketing. And according to me, that is what exactly extension was lacking. And that extension wing, if it works through NGO, through small and medium sector organizations, maybe state agriculture universities, ICAR, IARI, CG center can perform the best. And I thought, and I have seen many things in last 25, 30 years since when ICRIS had took the shape in Professor Swaminathan and Indira Gandhi's time when they started all this thing as a milestone, deliverables are seen now in last 5 or 10 years. Earlier 15-20 years, it was definitely not only high-end research, it was the establishment creation. So I believe that there will be disagreements, but with disagreements we still agree to work together, high-end research by CG centers, deliverables by these four bodies that I said. So this is my personal view and Nirmal Seed's view also. So what I represent as an organization is also that and that's my own mindset also that it has to be like that. Otherwise, see we are a society and in a society everything cannot be done by each individual and each organization. There are supposed to be some compartments and join those compartments for the betterment of the society. So my feeling is 
those compartments can be dealt together provided we decide which compartment which organization should fit in. So, according to me, these are the compartments and this is how they should collaborate and deliver to the society as a whole. It is very pinpointing question and uh, it challenges today in Indian context because when I have a hundred dollars, five years ago I would have said that I should put in sixty dollars in genomics and only forty in conventional breeding. But now the confusion stage has increased because the regulatory authorities related to clearance of genetically modified crops and other things have created certain hindrances and resistances in CG centers, in private sector bodies, in state agriculture universities that whatever amount of money that we are putting in for the research can it say that this is what is the day when I can deliver it on the farming field. Gloomy situation. For last six, seven years and for last two years the moratorium that has been put on GM crops and other things not only as a private sector I am sure that CG centers also have got lots of things in mind and even the donor organizations though they may have some clarity that GM should be allowed or not ultimately I foresee that still today as a private sector I would be interested to put in sixty dollars in genomic thing and only forty dollars in conventional though this resistance from regulatory authorities is there because I believe there will not be any other option left from the point of view of food security and trait specific work conventional breeding has got its own limitation. You have to use biological and biotechnological tools to breed your crop for the food security and the balancing of hidden hunger challenge as a whole and for zero hunger if you are talking like that it cannot be done to my knowledge. Of course there needs to be a perfect regulatory system which can be stringent but we can't say we will not do the field trials and moratorium for what for how long. So we can't stop scientific process of doing the work and I believe that genomics is one of that wherein deliverables are more perfect timelined and you can shorten the period for the betterment of the society. So sixty dollars there and forty in conventional bidding support system has to be like that for the regulation. Answer to the earlier question when I said that regulatory issues are becoming more and more stringent and unclear that when it can really go to the field that itself shows that maybe we will have to wait for next five years on a global context. Ten years is pretty long. So society will not wait for ten years. The pressure on government as well as regulatory authorities not only in India on a global level will be created not from private sector, not from CG centers. It will be societal pressure. One year bad of monsoon in India. Mark my words very clearly one year bad of monsoon in India and 16 million tons of food grains available as a reserve going back to market government of India will not have any other option to tell go ahead and use GM crops. But just because we have that safeguard that we have 60 million tons and this thing we are going ahead. We went from ship to mouth stage before green revolutions time but we allowed all the things from Mexican wheat and from Philippines Erie. The threats as well as high yielding varieties and lots of material to come here to do the breeding here and we got the best green revolution model. But that time also it was a support system of government, scientific communities approach and farming system and farmers have taken tremendous interest to develop that model. Today farmers are interested, scientific community is interested, government is unable to take the decision because of non-clear approach. That approach cannot be non-scientific. So it has to be with a scientific approach. As I said, one year bad of monsoon, government will say in Indian context GM because 
Today we are talking of only cotton. What happens to brinjal? What happens to food crops? And in last 35 years, in my knowledge, wherever GM crops have released, it has not seen a single example of really environmental distress or some human beings or any animal thing. As a scientific community body, we need to take regulatory affairs properly and stringent norm, but we will have to wait only for five years, societal pressure will be so much that we have lots of things in labs now, it has to go to field, it is a government body and societal pressure, it will decide within five to six years time, we will see the best out in the field and farmers field globally, that's my belief.